This review started off on some rough footing. While zeroing the gun in preparation for this video, not only did we have to replace the optic, but we also found out that the gun was shooting some of the worst rimfire grips that I've ever seen. I'll explain what's going on after I tell you what it is that we're dealing with. Hey, Range John. Oh, hey, Studio John. Have you ever heard of the Mag Shack? I think I heard about them in a TGC video one time. You should probably know about the Mag Shack. Oh, yeah. Why? Well, the Mag Shack does what the Mag Shack does, and you might need to know about the Mag Shack. Oh, you're being weird because of YouTube nonsense, aren't you? Yep. All right, I will look into the Mag Shack for sure. This is the Bergara BMR Carbon. BMR stands for Bergara Micro Rifle, and carbon is because it has a carbon fiber barrel. Ours is chambered in 22 long rifle and has an 18 inch barrel with a threaded muzzle for some kind of muzzle device. Duh. It comes with a five round and 10 round mag and tips the scales at about five pounds. The name of the game with this rifle is lightweight. And I chose it for a review because I wanted something that was fun to plank with, something that would handle varmints around the house, and better yet, something that carries that Bergara sub MOA guarantee and could potentially be used at a rimfire match. On top, you will see a Riton X3 Conker 3 to 15 by 44 scope. Okay, so now that you know what we're dealing with, let me tell you the story of this review. First, we had to replace the optic because of the suppressor. Yes, you heard me correctly. <laughs> I was originally running a Maxim Defense DRF-22 suppressor, and the gun was shooting groups so bad, I'm talking four to five inch groups at 50 yards with match ammo. And remember, I said this thing had a sub MOA guarantee. First time out, bad groups, we thought, Maybe the optic wasn't tracking correctly, swap it out for replacement of the same optic, and then we had the same issue. We even swapped out to Ben's Night Force optic to try and track down the issue on this gun. Bad grip still. All right, so here's the target at 50. This was with the right on. This is the long range, long range, and this was the red box match. This is a red box match with the, uh, what was it, Night Force? Night Force. And Ben is a competitive 22 shooter, and he shot all of these. That is piss poor out of a $700 gun, I think. And this is yeah. at 50 yards. I mean, this is that's just... Now, for reference, these dots are three-quarter inch, but that is not good. I was getting a bit frustrated, as you might tell. As it turns out, though, the issue was not the optic, but in fact was the suppressor. See that top group on this mess of a target? That was the first time we pulled the can off. As soon as we pulled it off the gun, the group shrank dramatically. And this was just on the trip to try and zero the damn thing. A quick walkthrough on these groups. Top left is with a tandem cross compensator on the muzzle, right on scope and SK Redbox ammo. Top right is Ely 10X ammo with a Cascade suppressor and Night Force scope. Bottom right and left are with the SK Red and the Riton and the Cascade can. And that ultra junk group in the middle, that was when we put that Maxim suppressor back on to confirm if it was in fact definitely causing issues. Yeah, I know, holy crap. I've never seen anything like that. I don't know if the can is screwed. I don't know what's going on there. Okay, so next trip out and we can finally test it 100 yards. I'm expecting sub MOA accuracy as that is the guarantee. We started off by testing an idea that I came up with and unfortunately because of YouTube overlords, I can't show you what happened. I thought perhaps tightening the can against the shoulder on the barrel was imparting some weird forces to throw the rounds crazy. So what we did was tighten it down, hand tight, and then back it off just a touch so that it wasn't actually imparting any force on the shoulder of the barrel. Do you think this is going to do anything? Uh, like legitimately, do you think it, it's gonna make a difference? Probably not. Okay. Cause I, the barrel's already tensioned, so I don't know. I don't think tightening that against the, tightening that against the so you just think it's the can in general? Yeah, I think it's just the can. Okay. Ben was immediately thrown off by how crazy inaccurate this setup was. Man, that's quiet. So we just put that can back on and just to test it with a semi-loose 
tension on there, or what did you find? Um, 20 MOA low. 20 MOA shift. And 10 MOA right. So we're not even going to bother trying to group with this thing. Let's try a different can and see what we come up with. Okay, so Ben was aiming... Where's my finger? Ben was aiming up there at that slanted stick. Hit down there in the number 11. That's how big of a difference that can imparted. From there, we shifted to other suppressors. Our next test is going to be the Silencer Co. Sparrow out on the muzzle of the Vergara. And it is quite a bit heavier than the last can, so we think it's probably going to shoot low. Let's shoot it and find out. So right now, Ben has the AAC Ranger 5, which is a 5.56 can on there. We're going to see if this imparts any accuracy anomalies. Go ahead and send that one. Man, that's quiet. Uh, good windage. Uh, about uh, one MOA low. Okay, so it's it's a little, it's a touch low. Yeah. We can put groups down with that yep. though, right? Yeah. All right. Cool. I will say that can is not as quiet as some of the others that we shot, but uh, how was the accuracy? About an one. inch. About an inch. Okay, let's go down range. Also, now that we're down range, I'm kind of taking pictures of the targets. That stick up there is what Ben was aiming at way, way, way up the berm. Like this even goes up even further, right? Or is it? No, it's just... No, just right there. Okay, so Ben was aiming at this stick like here, right? Up there yep. in the dirt and hitting way down here. It might have been this one. Wow. We found that the Silencer Co. Sparrow, an older design, was actually performing really well on this gun. And then we decided to run various types of ammo to see what ran best with that can. Okay, so we have figured out that this gun tends to shoot pretty good with the Silencer Co. Sparrow on there. In fact, shot... Uh, a group where we had a clover leaf going on, and now we're going to try some other ammunition to see how that affects results. Ben has the long range SK. It says it's for targets 100 yards and beyond. And beyond! So that will be pretty dang interesting. Then we've got some CCI green tag, CCI standard velocity, and Ely semi auto bench rest which Ben has had really good results with so far. Is that correct? Yeah, my 1022. That gun right there loves that ammo. So here we go. We're going to put some groups down. Stick with us. Okay, so for the audience, what are we doing here with shooting what we're calling a sort of seasoning group fouling in between? Fouling, fouling, shot, shots. fouling shots. Yeah. So what's the idea? So the, when I shoot different um, kinds of ammo and I'm trying to shoot groups, Usually you have to shoot between five and 10 rounds to season the barrel or foul the barrel with the different ammo because these all have different coatings on them. Like the CCI, the green tag, and the standard velocity probably don't have any lube on them. The SK long range and the Ely probably have different kind of lubes on them. So what you do is actually shoot a couple of shots and you'll see that it's all over the place, which we'll, we'll show it when we go down. The first, what, two went high, like, yeah, you had a couple high, and then it started and sucking the in the three, group. The last three went in the dot. Um, so now I'm going to shoot a 10-shot 10, 10 group uh, with that same ammo with the barrel seasoned. Lots and lots of groups later, it's time to see what the results are. So the CCI green tag and SK red box match ammo were our sort of home run types of ammo for this rifle. Okay, so we're here down at the targets. And first, before we get into this, this is where we were uh, fouling, clearing out the barrel, seasoning it, whatever you want to call it. This was actually the first one. So what happened here, Ben? So we had one, two, and then three shots real yep. close. Yeah, so one, two, and then it got to where the lube 
from that actual bullet for from that long range is actually coating the barrel so it goes into those three so and basically then, it's tightening up the more you shoot yeah yeah and then that was the ely bench rest which is still an inch and a quarter i mean these gr these groups are not because these are transitionary groups mm -hmm. these are not what we're going to count our our groups that count are over here on the sig targets and on the uh i think they're virtual kc shoot and see targets let's start here we forgot to shoot the mini mags i'm not super worried about that for this particular gun so this is SK long range. What do we have here in terms of group size? Inch and a half and then two inch. Inch and a half and two inch. That's okay. Yeah. Um, that's okay, I guess. What about the Ely bench rest? Uh, inch and a half and inch and a half. So that's a little bit more so, consistent. Pretty close. And then we move over to standard, standard velocity, velocity, which is pretty interesting because you had, that's a 10 shot group and, and you I, had one flyer. And I think that was the first shot too. I think that was really? the first shot and then, the, then it went up here. Because it's cleaning out all the lube. There's no lube in there now. So you might have needed to shoot that a little bit more over on the yeah, clearing the, target. The standard velocity and the green tag don't have any lube on them. Okay. So then we shot the we shot the standard velocity, and then we shot the green tag, which the green tag's three quarter and an inch. So the green tag shot really well. Yeah. I would say that even the standard velocity shot pretty well. Yeah. A ten shot, like nine shots within an inch. I'm pretty pleased with that out of a gun that's sort of meant to be an all-arounder. Let's compare this over here to our groups uh, earlier where we are shooting the SK Red Box, yeah. right? Yeah. So what did we have? What's going on here? So this one's around a half inch. Uh, that's with the compensator on it. Not, okay. No can. And then this one's uh, with a sparrow on it. And then that was the first shot. And then the last four, four went Four shots in a quarter inch <clears throat> with that sparrow on it. The last four shots with the with the SK Red Box match ammo, right? Yep, with the SK Red Box. What would you like if you were gonna, you know, if this was your gun and you were trying to figure out what you wanted to do with it? What would you, knowing that it's you know kind of an all arounder? I'd go either Red Box or the Green Tag. So you would probably stick with the Green Tag. You wouldn't go to the standard velocity. No, I'd go to the Green Tag or the Red Box if I could get it. That's the problem right now. It's hard to get the. The SK red box stuff. It's Actually, hard to get I, the match ammo. Yeah, I shoot the yellow box stuff uh, pretty much in my uh, bolt guns. So what was the difference? You were telling me when we were back there off camera, you were telling me that the SK stuff is grouped. The like the different colors are sort of like this one has looser tolerances. Then we tighten them up. Is yeah, that is that the idea? Uh, yeah, it's it's that's with any ammo, like especially the the um, the Ely stuff, and then the SK stuff is the same way, like. Uh, 10x and the different ones like 10x and uh, also um, if you're gonna go uh, like a bench rest or something like rest, that yeah yeah okay <clears throat> so it's also there's two different things it's, it's velocity and then it's also um, is it like bullet weight consistency is that and some... machine and machines like when they reset a machine um, they'll they won't have that as their ma their top line match ammo they'll let it run a little bit so sort of settle in yep Okay. Yep. So this is pretty interesting. I'm actually really pleased with the results. I mean, seeing a half inch group with a compensator on there, which really wasn't all that loud. Like I expected that yeah. to kind of sting a little bit, even with a roof and it wasn't. Not bad. Okay. So where does this leave us? A couple things that you need to know about if you are interested in this gun at all. The optic mount is one of the dumbest I've ever seen. I have no idea why, but the spacing for the slots is not even. It's not like the same distance between slots. There's the front side is tighter grouped and the back side is like normal pick rail. I don't understand why it's like that. It's also got a cutout to let cases eject, but that means you are almost forced to run a two-piece mount. And I had a heck of a time finding something in my gear that had the right single bar mounting, again, blah, blah, blah. I couldn't find it to get it set up. I had to dig to find a two-piece mount. I usually use AR-type mounts. That was kind of annoying. Not only that, but you better not have an optic with a large objective lens because with the non-adjustable stock, you don't have a ton of flexibility for scope height. We also ran into this issue with spent cases not ejecting kind of sporadically. Okay, so this has been happening sporadically throughout our testing. We finally caught it. What is going on here? So with these, the uh, ejector um, is like a, a piece that sticks up like this, has a little like foot on it, okay. a little finger. 
that like moves enough that when you go to eject it, it kind of like moves and then the brass goes back inside. It's a thing you just you just take this out of the stock and you stake it so it stops moving and that fixes. Apparently this is a known thing by the community and there is a fix for the issue, but it is weird to me that they haven't solved that at the factory yet. Otherwise we found that the gun did shoot some great groups with the right ammo. Sub MOA guarantee remains intact. I also thought the action was really smooth. The trigger was decent, the mags were pretty okay. And I'll also tell you that one of the next things that I'm gonna do with this gun is add an adjustable cheek rest so you can get a better and more consistent sight picture. I think if they offer that from the factory, like they show on the thumbnail of the promo video for this gun, I think then it would be really, really rad. I'll of course, fix that issue with ejection. But the question is, would you spend about 700 bucks on this gun? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that down in the comments and be sure to get subscribed for more reviews right here on The Gun Collective.